CJ, Finn, hate to tell you guys, but I just got off the phone with one of your professors, and they just let me know that you just cheated on a pop quiz? A take-home quiz? Are you serious right now? CJ, you were the one that was taking the quiz, and that's not acceptable, and you know that. So you're going to be suspended for the next two games. And Finn, you watched him cheat, and you didn't do anything about it? You know we care about academics here at Earlham. You're going to be suspended for the next game as well. Hope you guys take this time to think about what you did. Come on now, you're better than that. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is John J Gaming on the mic coming at you with a brand new episode of the Earlham Team Builder Dynasty here on NCAA 14 featuring that college football revamp of course and today we're taking on Winless Capital College man and for once we of course I was gonna be rocking with us man and you know we're pretty evenly matched when it comes to talent on paper you know C plus overall squad they have a C offense and a B minus defense we have a C minus offense but a C plus defense but we have done a much better job of maximizing the amount of talented that we have on this roster because you know we're three and one and they're zero and five you know so it's that coaching staff we can out coach these guys I think we'll be okay but it's gonna be an interesting one nonetheless but in case you haven't noticed though we do have a couple of suspensions CJ Holman is actually gonna be suspended for two games for cheating on a quiz you know we're not you know taking any uh like easy paths to the top so Jesse Green is going to be starting for us over the course of the next two games with Cameron Frost going ahead and backing him up. Meanwhile, at the left end, since Finn Otis was kind of the accomplice, but he didn't actually cheat on any tests, he is going to be suspended for just this game against Capital College. Uh, Chris Ty is going to come in and start, you know, in place of Finn Otis, and then. The, uh, we actually have an interesting thing, you know, third string guy now, Justin Burden, we might see him playing on the defensive line. Side note, before we got into the, uh, you know, the conference play, we did have a late request to have a custom recruit, so this is SpongeBob SquarePants, he is a true freshman at Golden Glades, Florida. He is going to be redshirt, so you won't see him on the field this season, but he can be a future contributor on this team. So let's go ahead and get this game officially underway. Your Earlham Quakers are going to go ahead and take on the Capital Crusaders. It's going to be a good one, man, so make sure you smash that like button as well as hit subscribe if you do happen to be brand new. Let's go ahead and get it done, fellas. Let's go 4-1 and one on the season, man. So the first, one of the first teams that we have to go up against knowing that we do have academic suspensions on our team is the Capital Crusaders now. Luckily for us, you saw the record, and they're hot garbage, man. They're 0-5 coming into this game, so hopefully we can come in and make some quick work against these guys, but we'll just have to wait and see. So far, you know, things are going okay. Nobody has scored here just yet, but hopefully, you know, on this drive right here, we can change that as Jesse Green gets it into the end zone. Touchdown, Earlham! And so we do get off to a nice 7-0 lead here, you know. Nice little start for the guys here early. As we do hold on to that 7-0 lead here. As we force a fumble on our next possession. And it's going to be recovered by Matthew Sands as well. Let's go, man. I'm pretty sure that's Chris Ty that managed to get in there and forced a fumble on the quarterback. You know, so great work by our defensive line early. And even though we didn't get a touchdown on the board, we still ended up, you know, getting some points up in there. And so we are now up 10 to nothing here as we look to drive down the field once again. Continue to build this decent little lead that we got going on here after one quarter of play. Let's see if we can do just that. Is Miami going to throw this downfield? He has a man! Jakeem Short going up and catching that ball. Look at you, my guy. 5 foot 11, but don't tell him that. He can come up and make a big grab for us here. It's going to lead to a touchdown here to our main man, Jesse Green. One of the best backups, I would say, that we have on the squad. It's the first touchdown pass of the day for Miami Uagalie, and it leads to a 17-0 lead here against the Capital Crusaders. 
doing it on the road as well. That's something that I definitely like to see going forward. But, you know, we'll see if Capital has some kind of response. They do have their offense out on the field. And things are going a little bit better. For the most part, we've been holding them to free and outs. Maybe one first down at most. You know, we've been shutting them down throughout the course of this game. But it looks like Capital is putting together their first really good drive of this entire game so far as we got first and goal now coming up here moss will drop back he's gonna throw it to the right hand side but frozen into the hands of josh brown our middle linebacker with the second turnover of the day so we prevent the capital crusaders despite being in a goal line situation from scoring any points whatsoever and we'll get the ball back here, you know, deep in our own territory. But we'll see how long that lasts, though. As Adam Hill deferred, he's able to slice up field already across the 30-yard line. At least gives us a little bit more breathing room to work with going forward as Miami rolls out to the right. Nice throw over to Derek Blue as well. Managing to pick up 19 yards here in the process. Has got another first and 10 coming up here, Miami. Dropping back, throwing over the middle, gets it to Jariah Bond. And we're moving down the field pretty efficiently. That's something that I certainly love to see here as well. But let's see if we can get this running game going as well. We haven't really done much running with the absent of CJ Holman. We gotta get Jesse Green going to the transfer from Anderson. Let's see if we can get him going as well moving forward. You know, because we're going to need Jesse Green to, you know, to really uh, feel himself the next couple of games. CJ Holman could be a big absence for us if we play against tougher opponents. So, some game experience for Jesse Green certainly would never hurt us whatsoever. As Jesse Green was able to find the end zone. That's his first touchdown of the ball game. And so, we're up 24 to nothing. And after a punt, you know, uh, free and out that we forced. Justin Burns going to get the ball. You see he's one of the most explosive players in college football. Going to be brought down all the way across the 25-yard line. A great return for Justin Burden, but it's going to be ruined by a freaking clipping penalty. Imagine that. That is so tragic. So now instead of, you know, being in the red zone potentially, we're facing a third and long here instead. But we get a great quick throw over to Adam Hill deferred who makes the catch and granted it was also a really nice job you know really nice throw by Miami on the anticipation as well so fresh set of downs that we get to work with and we're just slicing up this defense whatever we basically want to go ahead and do we're able to go ahead and do it as we're having no trouble whatsoever moving the football on the Capitol Crusaders as Miami just gonna go ahead and scramble it into the end zone himself Miami getting a touchdown on the ground as well that makes it 31 to nothing crusaders just not standing a chance whatsoever so 31 to nothing ball game here less than a minute left and joseph burns gonna get another crack at returning this thing back let's see if he can do it he's got some space on the outside one man left to beat he's got some blockers as well but he goes out of bounds i think if he caught an inside or trying to cut it back inside. He could have had more space for a touchdown. But still a really great return by Justin Burden. And with 34 seconds left. We have an opportunity to add more points on the board. That would be insane. Because we're having a fantastic first half right now. As Derek Blue. One man the beat. Cannot beat him. But gets you know inside the 5 yard line. You'll love to see it. Is now first and goal coming up. Following the big run on the jet sweep. We get it into the end zone where Jakeem Short is waiting for us. Another touchdown for Earlham. As Miami is just slinging it all around the field. A 38 to nothing ball game here. As we get towards the end of uh, you know first, uh, first half. As we still hold a 38 nothing lead. We'll see if Capital can do anything about it. But we'll just have to wait and see for the time being. As we do get into the last play of the first half, you know, we got that man up free deep here. Second and free. Just uh, try to close things out here pretty smoothly. As they throw downfield, it's dropped by just by Caden Doman. It's caught off the deflection. You have to be kidding me. That's how they get their first points of the game. And the defense was there, you know. Caden Doman makes that catch, you know. 
Maybe worst case scenario, it's a safety, but that's how Capital breaks the shutout. You have to be kidding me. So 38 to 7 ball game here as we do get the kickoff to start the second half. And Justin Byrne was feeling some type of way of giving up a touchdown in the first half because he gets it right back on the first play to start the second half. That is the longest kick return in NCAA history. And it's broken by Justin Burden, who ironically set the previous record of 99 yards just in the last game or just earlier this season. So this is the second time this year that Justin Byrne has broken the school record. And it's leading us to a 45-7 lead here. As now Capital will be looking to try to pick up the pieces just a little bit now. We'll see if they can actually go ahead and do it. They've been struggling all day today. As we got a second and five now coming up. Moss dropping back. Looking over to the right hand side. Gets it out to Bill Gray. Who just barely manages to pick up the first down. As the Crusaders looking to get into their no huddle offense. They're just looking to do something different. You know, looking to get some more results on the board. Because other than that really lucky Hail Mary that they got at the end of the first half. They have not scored on us all day long. We've been dominating these guys. And this is, keep in mind, we don't have our full, you know, slate of starters. You know, two of our starters are currently out with academic suspension. So... You know, a couple of backups we have out there, you know, Chris Ty, you know, he's usually uh, not listed as, you know, full-time starter, but, you know, he, he's out there. You know, as Caden Doman, you know, gets the interception, and that's going to be interception number three, of, or turnover number three on the day. Caden Doman killing another drive. You know, Doman may not be the most athletic person on the team, but I'll tell you what, man, this is a guy right here, you know. That is able, you know, he's there to make plays. You know, he is just a gamer. Fortunately, you know, because of his athleticism, he won't make it to the NFL. But such a great college leader to have, man. I'm going to miss him, you know, when he graduates later this season. But, you know, for the time being, we're just trying to go ahead and enjoy it while it lasts, so to speak. As Earl, the offense, once again, driving downfield. As we'll hand it off to Jesse Green, who tries to bounce it outside. Gets it across the 20-yard line and also across that first down marker. That's good for a 12-yard uh, gain as well. As it looks like Jesse Green even gets shaken up a little bit. So, you know, we'll go ahead now. We have uh, another uh, Cameron. We have actually have two Cameron Frost. I don't know how that managed to happen, but it did uh, manage to happen somehow. As it does go ahead and lead to a third and goal situation. We'll go ahead and hand it off to Jesse Green. Who does come back in the in the field. And we just continue the domination. You absolutely love to see it. Alright man. You want to talk about the biggest beatdown that we've given out so far this season. It's this one right here man. We didn't even have all of our stars. We had a couple of them suspended. But look what we ended up doing. Yes. We did allow 350 yards of total offense, but keep in mind, a lot of that happened, you know, in the fourth quarter after, you know, we finished these guys off. They were 1 for 10 from third down conversions and then 0 for 3 from the red zone. That means they had three red zone trips and did not get any points out of it. That is so sad. Actually, the only time they scored was off of an extremely lucky Hail Mary at the end of the first half. And we also forced free turnovers. We did a great job of holding on to the football ourselves. And that's a great recipe for success. So checking out the player stats for our guys in Miami, Uagalie. He probably had one of his best games of the season yet. 18 for 22, 221 yards and two touchdowns. CJ Patton also came in with some garbage time action. and was 5 for 10, 70 yards and a touchdown as well. So good for him. Running game, you know, we didn't lose too much of a beat overall. Jesse Green got the start and was pretty good. I would say 11 carries, 6 free yards, and 3 touchdowns. Cameron Frost also got his first action since, uh, you know, his freshman year, true freshman year, I would say. Um, 7 carries for 70, for 35 yards, not too shabby. Miami Uigalie also found the end zone as well. He ended up with 5 carries for 33 yards. For the receivers, we got a bunch of different receivers involved, man. We uh, Nobody had more than 5 catches, but look at who touched the football with the exception of Robert Price Jr., he did have a drop, but 
you know, other than that, you know, almost all of our receivers, wide receivers and tight ends, touched the football today. Uh, Jeremy Sprinkle Jr. and Jakeem Short each tied with four catches apiece. Uh, and Adam Hildeford also had four catches apiece. Uh, Jakeem Short actually led us today. He had 56 solo yards and then had a touchdown through the air as well with Dariah Bond. He wasn't too far behind, just 52 uh, yards receiving. Jesse Green found the end zone off of two catches for 12 yards. And then CJ Holman off of his only catch. He was actually supposed to be suspended, so I think when we put the backups in, uh, we, we moved him off the depth chart, but it's whatever, man. It is what it is. Uh, Nate Coleman, uh, Zacoby Johnson, Jeremy Norton each had multiple pancakes. John Bird uh, came in also had a pancake as well. And then defensively, Nate Hunt, he came in and had eight total tackles on the day, which you absolutely love to see. Kane Dolman wasn't too far behind. He had six tackles, but also had an interception. That the non-capital points when they were in the red zone one of the times that we actually played. Uh, we had three total sacks as well. Nate Hunt got a couple of sacks. And then Chris Ty, um, his first start of his collegiate career uh, at the defensive end position. You know, got a, got a tackle, TFL, and a sack. Not only did Caden Doman get an interception, but also Josh Brown got an interception as well. And returned it for a grand total of six yards. And then finally, Chris Ty actually uh, forced a fumble. I forgot to mention that, but Matt Sands... You know, was able to get a fumble recovery as well on top of it. So we move on to our next game, you know, and this next game is going to be a little bit more challenging for us. We play against the Mount St. Joseph Lions, and this team significantly better than the Capital Crusaders. You know, their B overall squad, B plus offense, B minus defense. You know, that being said, you know, we have the top five offense in the country, 41 points per game. They're scoring about 35 points a game themselves, so... I actually wouldn't be shocked if this was also, if this turned into a shootout like we did against uh, the Wittenberg game, you know, but you know, we'll just have to wait and see, you know, see if we can win two games in a row in a single episode, man, that would be certainly be a first in this dynasty. And not to mention, we will indeed have Finn Otis back in the starting lineup. He served his one game suspension. So he will be back out on the field of oh, that being said, you know, Chris Ty, you know, he's not too bad. You know, he's having a pretty solid year, actually. 12 tackles, three sacks, and now has a forced fumble to his name. His first year on the field's been really good. You know, Finn Otis, you know, not a, it's been a little bit of a, of a downturn lately. You know, he can still has plenty of time to turn around. We have seven games left to play. So just uh, try not to freak out too much. So we go ahead and get ourselves Finn Otis back and perfect timing for it as well. As we will go ahead now, we're taking on the number 15 team in the nation, Mount St. Joseph, who I would venture to say is a little bit better than the capital team than we went up against, you know, in, you know, earlier in this episode. But Justin Burton, you know, he's still trying to go ahead and give him the business, a 37-yard punt return that gives our guys some beautiful, you know, field position to work with here as we're still going ahead and Looking for the first points of this game as Miami, he's actually going to get loose. One man left to beat, but is eventually brought down close to that five-yard line. And you know what? If it's not broke, why fix it? Calling another read option as Miami does get into the end zone. Untouched as well. Touchdown, Earlham. And we strike first against the number 15 team in the entire nation, baby. Let's go, man. So we're up seven to nothing, and the defense, defense is also doing its job as well. You know, holding them. You know, basically defense. You know, can't really get much of anything going whatsoever. And the special teams, special teams. You know, Justin Byrne is just a special football player. If he might go ahead and try to declare for the draft early, you know, we'll just have to see what happens. He's already been a major award winner. And he's already showing that he's one of the most electric players in all of college football. As you see there, Justin Burton taking it back for a touchdown. That gives us a 14-0 lead here as Miami still trying to go ahead and do work. Dangerous throw on a third and seven. But does manage to get it to Adam Hill for a really nice gain. Gain of 14 yards. That was, you know, the receiver kind of bailing out Miami just, just a little bit there because, you know, Probably, uh, most of the time, that probably should have been picked off, you know, to be honest with you guys. But, 
Hey, sometimes it is a little bit better to be lucky than it is to be good at the end of the day. And we got another first and 10 coming up. Here is Miami. Dropping back, throwing to the right-hand side. Gets it out to Jariah Bond. Quick throw, that's good for a gain of 16. As Earl looks to once again punch it in the end zone with the offense. Miami looking around, going to punch it in himself. Second rushing touchdown for Miami Ugalier. And we jump up on the 15th ranked team in the nation. 21 to nothing. And even if, you know, Mount St. Joseph gets their offense going, they do manage to get a field goal on their next possession. That being said, though, we are just giving them the business right now as Burden, we're going to return this all the way back, but he gets chased down at the end of the day. Getting a little bit tired, you know, when you play defense and special teams at the exact same time. But still, a 74-yard kick return is just setting up some phenomenal field position for our guys. It's something that I absolutely love to see as Miami, off of the huge kick return, gets it out to Jakeem Short. And it's a 19-yard gain that's going to get us into a goal line situation. As we got third and goal now, trying to punch it in the end zone before the end of this ball game. Miami. Throwing quickly over to Cameron Frost, who gets it into the end zone. Touchdown, Earlham. Let's go, baby. 28-3 lead. And you know what? We're not the Atlanta Falcons, so we probably won't go ahead and uh, blow this lead. Or at least that's what I want to say, as Caden Dolman actually misses the tackle. Mount St. Joseph, they get the football to start the second half here as well. Has got first and 10 now coming up. Randall dropping back. Going to throw over in the middle. Gets it to Holland, who ends up picking up a first down as well, despite the tough coverage as well. So a third and 10 now coming up here for the Lions. As Randall will throw out to the left-hand side. Gets it out to Justin Ray. And he picks up the first down as well before Josh Brown can come in and make a tackle as well. So another first and 10 coming up here. Another drop back for Randall as we almost had the interception with Deontay McCord. I ran behind him. But if I would have ran in front of him, I would have had that interception wholeheartedly. We read it like a book. We should have been going the other way with it. But, you know, just so that, you know, we're not perfect. And that's totally okay. You know, we just have to be good enough, you know, to win these games. And, you know, right now, even with the drive that... Mount St. Joseph's pointing together. We still have ourselves a really nice lead to work with for the time being. As Randall will drop back, throw over to Justin Ray, who gets it into the end zone. Touchdown, Mount St. Joseph. Finally getting their first touchdown on the board. But that is actually as close as they were ever going to get, though, as Earlham, you know. We don't fall apart. Like the Atlanta Falcons did in the Super Bowl all of those years ago against New England Patriots. That led to, you know, Tom Brady's, it was either his fifth or sixth Super Bowl. Doesn't really matter. You know, still, uh, you know, won it off an amazing comeback. Earlham not allowing that, though. Taking care of business against the 15th ranked team in the nation. 31 to 13. All right, man. So it feels good to come out here and get another win, but... This was mostly on the back of our special teams, I'm not going to lie. Special teams and defense, you know, even though we did end up scoring 31 points throughout the game, we only had 243 yards of total offense, you know. We didn't turn the ball over, which is really good, but we did have, you know, a spe one special teams touchdown and then, you know, a kickoff return that almost was a touchdown for us as well. So, you know, defense and special teams really coming through and uh, doing some good stuff today. As for the rest of our guys, you know, checking out the stats for the guys, you know, in, the, uh, in our second game of this episode against the Mount St. Joseph Lions. We, uh, we went 14 for 19, 117 yards and a touchdown with Miami Uigalie. You know, he didn't really push the ball downfield very much, but he did do enough to make sure that we go ahead and won this football game. And that's the biggest thing that I care about at the end of the day. For the running game, though, Jesse Green was pretty solid once again. He had 15 carries for 60 yards. But Miami Uigalie had both touchdowns on the ground, though. We ended up with two touchdowns, 10 carries for 42 yards with our star quarterback. And then with our receivers, you know, receivers didn't really get a chance to hold the football very much today. You know, granted, we did have a couple of drops. 
so that didn't necessarily help the cause out very much whatsoever but you know that being said jesse green led the way in catches he ended up with four total catches on the day but not very efficient with them only got 12 yards matter of fact our reading receiver was Jariah bond from a yardage perspective but he only had 36 yards total and then cameron frost our walk-on running back he ended up with a touchdown on the ground off of three yards and two catches for the blocking we did allow two sacks today and sam price the third was one of those guys that did allow a sack so did andy richardson a true sophomore from madison heights michigan one of the uh walk uh preferred walk-ons that we had on the squad um they um you know got got a block or not block but got a sack and then for our defense you know the defense played really well today and particularly josh brown and chris ty chris ty had seven tackles moving back to that defensive tackle position kicking him inside was been a really good move overall we might go ahead and make that permanent depending on you know what our future recruiting classes look like but you know we got josh brown you know who also had seven tackles and then nate hunt and then justin burden also had six tackles as well four different guys also had tf uh multiple tfls that was chris ty josh brown Caden doman and justin burden once again justin burden and chris ty you know getting multiple sacks we didn't force any turnovers but it's all good because we didn't uh give up any turnovers whatsoever but you know the real star of the day how about justin bird and special teams had one kick return the entire game but he brought it back 73 yards he almost took that to the crib and then he also had five punt returns for 153 yards and a touchdown today justin burton i'm gonna say it right now one of the, the best all-around player in this conference and should be considered one of the most electric players in college football he has been a phenomenal pickup for us in our very first recruiting class that we brought in all right man so we do end up getting two really nice wins in this episode and look what we see here man they finally put some respect on our name we are now ranked in the top 25 coming in ranked 25th in the nation and we look to continue those expectations of carrying ourselves like a top 25 team as next episode we will go on the road to play against the bluffton beavers man you know a team that were pretty similar you know going up against them to be honest with you so i mean it's going to be a really good episode but man we've came a really long way from our very first games against clemson and northwestern back in season one to right now we're bowling out opponents now here in season four and we get our first ever top 25 ranking i am so proud of how far this program has came it's gonna be a good one man so make sure you smash that like button and hit subscribe if you have to be brand new this is john j gaming on the mic signing off but hoping you're all out there having a wonderful day take care everybody